Well, Girish, we actually don't know why the suppression order was imposed over the weekend in the first place. The ABC wasn't in court at the time and I haven't seen any reasoning that's been put out there publicly. But we did hear today in the court uh, a bit of an argument about the suppression order before the magistrate decided to lift it, which gives you a sense of what the arguments may have been uh, back on the weekend. Look, essentially, lawyers for Mr Baini Marama argued that it should remain suppressed, that his name should remain suppressed, uh, in part because of the media interests surrounding this trial. They said that there might well be information that the media would have access to as part of their reporting, which wouldn't necessarily be in front of a jury if this, in fact, does go to a jury trial uh, down the track, which could potentially uh, influence uh, the, the, the jury through that media coverage. So his lawyers argued that there was a good reason to keep it suppressed. They also said that he would be relying on his good name to defend the charges uh, and therefore the media reporting drawing on that information may have an impact uh, on that trial. Lawyers for the ABC, however, and media organisations there argued against that. They said it was a very long bow to suggest that jurors may be influenced uh, 12 months or so down the track if, if a jury is impanelled in the future uh, by any media reporting that, that crops up now uh, and uh, argued that there was no justifiable reason to keep the, uh, to keep the suppression order in place. And eventually the magistrate agreed, uh, saying essentially that uh, she wasn't convinced by the arguments put forward by Mr Bani Marama's lawyers. She said that, you know, cases like this are sadly not unusual, that allegations of domestic violence are not particularly unconventional and there have been fairly high profile people, uh, for example, she uh, listed NRL players uh, who have uh, had similar allegations made against them and which uh, have been covered in the media. So she didn't see anything extraordinary about this trial justifying a suppression order uh, and therefore it was lifted. So with the trial, what happens next? Uh, well, we know that Mr Bani Marama will return to court, or rather his case will return to court uh, in uh, October, on October 14, so that's still a little while to go. Uh, given the nature of the, the, the charges here, and there are 17 charges which have been levelled against Mr Bani Marama, uh, ranging across assault, uh, choking without consent, uh, stalking, intimidation, uh, they're fairly serious charges, so it could lead, uh, we're told, to, uh, to a jury being impanelled. If that does happen, this could take quite a while. You can imagine this uh, this case easily dragging on for several months, uh, perhaps even more than a year, uh, until uh, there's some sort of resolution. Of course, he is the son of Fiji's Prime Minister. What are the political implications here for Frank Bainimarama? Yeah, look, there are certainly some political ramifications for Frank Baini Marama, uh, Meli Baini Marama's father, who is, of course, facing what seems to be a pretty tight contest uh, in, uh, in the election. Now, that election is not far away. It's got to be held before January next year. Mr Baini Marama has already said it will happen this year. So most pundits are tipping a poll perhaps around uh, November or so, although it's difficult to be sure, and he's facing a tough contest. Uh, we've got uh, a former uh, Prime Minister, the former Prime Minister, Mr. Sivena Rambuka, uh, who is challenging him for the top job. It's difficult to say exactly where that contest is at, but most close observers say it could easily be a really, really tight one from Mr. Bani Marama. Certainly, Mr. Rambuka presents a pretty serious challenge to him, and, and it could be a close contest. In that context, you'd have to say a development like this, even though it doesn't directly touch on Mr. Bani Marama, Frank Bani Marama himself or his credibility, is at best a very unwell welcome distraction for the Prime Minister and could well have implications in a contest which could easily go right down to the wire. OK, Stephen Judgett's in Canberra. Thanks very much. Thanks, Girish. Appreciate it.